So after me, it's it's going to be Marlies Fellinger. She's an urbanist. She's working uh, at the municipal uh, administration of the city of Vienna, and is going to to explain some uh, very focused and precise ways of doing in the city, maybe small actions, big changes. This is possible. Thank you. Hola, um, buenas tardes and good afternoon. Um, my name is Maris Fellinger. I'm from Austria, from Vienna. Um, I'm working at the city administration of Vienna at the municipal department for urban development and planning. Um, Vienna, I don't know how many of you have already been to Vienna. <laughs> I suppose some, yeah. <laughs> so um, Vienna is famous for its culture, for its music, um, for its beautiful city center. There were many parks and public urban and green areas. But in Vienna, there were also some rather rough areas, mostly densely built areas. And furthermore, um, Vienna is currently one of the um, most rapidly growing cities within the German-speaking countries. So at the moment, we have 1.8 million um, inhabitants, but um, there is an increase of 30,000 people per year. So and sometimes it may happen that in these rough areas or in areas of transformation, there is not enough space for children and, and teenagers. Um, they do not have enough space for leisure time activities, um, um, places where they can um, meet each other, where they can hang out, um, do sports like um, skateboarding or playing basketball. So I'm working on a strategic program of the city of Vienna. It's called Simply Multiple. It's called a strategic program, but um, actually it's a really operational one. And the um, project is managed by the project coordination for multiple use. It's me and my boss, so we are only two people working on this program. And the program um, promotes the shared and intermediate use of public space in order to create additional leisure time um, space for children and teenagers. So you may ask yourself um, about the connection to the topic of healthy cities. Um, the thing is that we truly believe that um, children and teenagers have the natural urge to be active, to move, um, to run, to play. But what they really hate is somebody telling them you have to be active, you have to do sports in order to stay healthy. It almost causes allergic reactions. <laughs> So we have to create um, possibilities for children and teenagers to move in everyday life, apart from, from club sport activities, competitive sports or school sports. So it is crucial to um, create easily accessible um, sport and leisure time facilities um, so that movement and physical activities can be part of their everyday life. Um, the project was founded already in 1998. So already then Vienna was a really growing city and the project was created in order to, or in response to the growing need of public spaces for children and teenagers. So the purpose of the project was and still is to create more um, of these spaces, but without actually building anything, but with using and reusing existing, but unused public spaces. So we work with two main concepts. Um, on the one hand, we work with multiple or shared use of spaces belonging to the municipality. And on the other hand, we work with intermediate use um, of mostly private spaces. So within the last years, um, many different projects have been realized. For example, a self-built um, playground of 7,000 7, square meters in a new housing development whose playground was unfinished or um, skate facilities under a subway station, 
Or another project was, was the installation of a temporary beach volleyball court on an empty building lot. So you can see um, it's only small interventions, small projects. Although we are part of the urban de development planning and planning department, um, we are not a traditional planning office. We do not draw plans. We do not um, formul formulate planning goals, strategies, or guidelines. Um, we are a coordinating body. We are doing intermediary work. We are promoting projects. We are publicizing them to, the in to interested parties and residents and liaising with the municipal departments and other agents um, facilitating the projects. Our, what is really important is that our work is based on the assumption that all parts and pieces um, which are necessary for implementing new projects are already there and you just have to bring them together. together. So I would now like to pre um, present some projects we worked on because sometimes it's easy to explain what we do by showing some examples. The first project I want to present is called Underground. It's located in the northeast of Vienna um, where the city turns into suburbs and um, the houses turn from apartments into um, family houses. And there the city lacks of infrastructure for, uh, for, for children and teenagers. The only um, leisure time activity they can do there is going to an adjacent shopping center, but you may agree that it's not really an appropriate leisure time for leisure time activity for children. Um, so in 2007, the project coordination for multiple use got access to an unused space below a new motorway exit. Um, at that time, the, the person in charge for bridges asked my boss whether she had an, an idea what to do with this space. Um, and she said, well, okay, let me think about it. <laughs> and after some time and some um, participation workshops realized together with the local youth center, um, the, um, the, uh, the, yeah, the, 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 the building of a playground was initiated. So as you can see on the pictures, um, only small interventions were made, only small changes, um, like an additional basketball basket or a new bench. But now it's a perfect setting for children and teenagers. It's a place where they can hang out, where they can meet, where they um, can do sports, but where they can interact between each other without being observed by their parents, and where they also can be noisy, so it's their own place. But let's move on to the next project. Um, this project um, shows that in many cases, conflicts lead to a new project. So I already told you that we are not a common planning office and seldomly start the projects on our own. Um, in many cases, a specific conflict uh, triggered a new project. Oh, sorry. For example, in the fifth district in Vienna, which is a really dense and central one, and their children um, used the staircases and the, ha the handrails of a big council house as obstacles for, sk um, for skateboarding. And of course, the residents were not happy at all about that. So, but instead of just in expelling the teenager, um, we um, decided to search together for a new spot where they would not disturb others, where making noise is also allowed. So after some time of searching, the children found an interesting place they wanted to use. The space they found was in the median, so in the middle of a really big street called the Gürtel. You have to know that the Gürtel is the most frequented and biggest street in Vienna. So some kind of protection of the children really was necessary. And together we developed the idea to build um, football cages in, in the median. So it's not easy to argue football cages in the middle of, of the biggest street of Vienna. But finally, we managed to do so, and since then, the, the football cages are a really high-frequented sports area, even during the evening. But what really is remarkable at, about that project is that the, ch the children themselves um, came up with this idea to use that space. So um, in many cases, the users themselves have the best ideas because they look at spaces in, other, in another way than we planners do. The 
The next project is located at the Nordbahnhof. Um, it's a former railway station, which is now one of the biggest urban development areas. Um, there are newly built houses right beside um, fellow lands, and some years ago, uh, a self-organized group of young people started to build a, a skater park illegally right on one of these remaining fellow lands. And the material was sponsored by Red Bull, an Austrian company you may know, um, which really loves to fund risky projects. So a community garden was built, a tree house was built, several parties were organized for the neighborhood, and the skate park turned into a meeting point for the neighborhood, but it still was illegally. And so it didn't take a long time until the landowner started to demolish the skate park. But like in many other European cities, um, Vienna is really, really interested in participation and in including committed citizens, citizens in the planning process. Um, so what to do with this group of young people who turned an unused land into a high value meeting point for the neighborhood. So we got involved in the negotiations and tried to coordinate and communi communicate between the, the district, the landowner, the skateboarder, and the city administration. And finally, after one year of medi mediation, the landowner um, allowed the skateboarders to rent the lot for a small amount of money. So after one year, the, the landowner did not um, extend the contract, so they had to leave the place again. But, so not all projects turn out to be su successful, but at least they could st um, stay one year longer. So the project coordination um, of multiple use also promotes um, projects focused on the special requirements of groups of users, um, such as senior citizens or girls. Studies have shown that girls from the age of 12 often withdraw from public parks and social workers and um, park supervision teams who work with such groups of girls um, have often expressed the need for a protected place that can be used by girls exclusively. So that's why we supported the project Garden for Girls. The project um, offers an exclusive place that can be used um, from girls of different age, age um, where they can meet each other, where they can play, dance, where they build tree houses together, do handcrafts, learn how to garden. So many different actions can happen there. And this project has shown that um, having a protected place for, for girls, um, especially for girls during the age of 12, 13, 14, um, helps them to return to the parks and take their own active role again and um, expressing their needs um, regarding the public places. So besides the lack of urban space for children and teenagers, there are new challenges regarding um, the growing demand for indoor facilities as a complement to outdoor spaces and green areas. Um, because indoor facili uh, facilities are an opp opportunity for multiple um, free time activities that, that can happen all year long. So in the pictures you can see a multi-purpose room. Um, it's an example for one room and it's located in a former unused room in a public swimming pool. So I now showed five different projects we worked on. If you're interested in more projects, I have some postcards with me, which so show inspiring pictures of projects we worked on. And I can give them to you. So, but I want to turn out, uh, point out once more that it's not really important where the projects are really located, um, or who did which task, who funded the projects. Um, it's, it's more about the idea that on, uh, also small interventions and small changes can really have an, an additional benefit for the people. Like, for example, an additional entrance or an additional basketball, bas basketball basket or even a change in, in organization or in management. So besides this kind of projects, which are really well adopted at the speci spe uh, specific lo uh, local situation, we are working on standardizing the shared use of school sports fields. The school sports fields um, could represent a very attractive offer for children and teenagers, especially outside the school hours. And in Vienna, it's not usual to open these installations um, to the general public outside school hours, 
although it would allow the maximum use out of public infrastructure. Um, there are many counter arguments like extra for the extra organizational work or extra costs, but nevertheless, it has been possible to establish um, multiple use projects in all districts of Vienna with different um, dimensions and char characteristics. So a project which really turned out well is the so-called Dr. Josef Reschplatz. It's a public park and a public school is located right next to the public park, but the school was going to be closed due to its lack of outdoor spaces and sports fields. And at the same time, the public park was in a state of abandon and it was only infrequently used. So it was decided to carry out a, a general renovation jointly, the school and the park, and to build generous sports fields in the park which can be used now by the school during school hours and after school and on public holidays by the general public. So, but our best practice is the so-called Actin Park. Previously, the, act the Actin Park was a normal sports field from a school, um, but the fence protecting the place um, was destroyed several times by the children of the neighborhood because, of course, they wanted to enter and and used the sports field. Um, and instead of building the fence higher and higher in order to keep the children out, the school decided to abolish the fences. And now it's the first, first um, school without fences, um, which is accessible for everyone. So our steady work on standardizing shared use is already bearing fruits. The um, shared use of school sports facilities is now already part of um, a new educational concept. So in Vienna, new schools are always built as education campuses. Um, the education campus has a new ed um, pedagogical concept. In a campus, there is the kindergarten, the compulsory school, and the primary school located in only one single building. And for these education campuses, the um, shared use of the sports facilities is already part of the um, architectural competition. In 2014, um, the Municipal Council of Vienna adopted the Smart City Vienna Framework Strategy. There are three main fields of action, um, resources, quality of living, and innovation. And we believe that also small projects like Simply Multiple are a really good practical example of implementing the smart city goals. The shared and the intermediate use of public and private spaces has many positive effects. And one is, of course, the positive influence on health and well-being of children and young people. Because, as I already said in the beginning, a key factor of health is the regular movement in everyday life. Thanks for your attention.